Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to an Italian leather goods house. It's a brand that's incredibly significant when you consider the ethos of my channel, high quality under the radar brands. And it's a brand that's behind producing uh, bags for some of the good and the great, some of the brands you've asked me about, but it's brands that are high quality under the radar. And they're typically fashion brands, uh, primarily focused on fashion, and then the brand produces their handbags, but they also produce their own range of bags, which I will talk about a little later in the video. They're behind uh, brands such as Lanvin, they also produce uh, Salvatore Ferragamo's bags that I've been asked about on numerous occasions. Um, they also produce Tiffany & Co's bags. Um, and Tiffany & Co is a brand I recently spoke about. I'm going to attach the video above. And it was a video where I was talking about brands that are primarily focused on jewelry, but they've um, started introducing other products because jewelry is something that you typically buy once, twice in your life. And particularly these brands that are focused on fine jewelry, that is pricey. They're also behind uh, Schiparelli's uh, bags, a brand that has uh, recently been revived. And they're also behind American brand Tom Brown's bags. And Tom Brown is interesting because they have cute novelty bags. Think, for example, the dog bags. The level of detail and craft that goes into the, into the bags, into making the bags, is what this particular brand is famed for. They're also behind Ralph Lauren's bags. I'm going to attach the video above where I recently spoke about Ralph Lauren. And in that video, I mentioned uh, Ralph Lauren bags are absolutely phenomenal. They deserve a much higher profile. They're incredibly exquisite, beautiful bags. Think of their front running style, the Ricky, a sumptuous calfskin. It's smooth, patinas wonderfully. And the bags, the brand deserves a much higher profile. And the Italian brand behind all of those bags and other brands I'll talk about in due course is Bianchi Enardi 1946. I'm going to be introducing you to maybe another two, three other brands um, in the run up to Christmas because I'd like to pad out um, the video or rather the short I first introduced, which I'm going to touch above, where I was talking about the seven essential bags um, that the average person will need, depending on your lifestyle, your taste, your budget, and so forth. And the number of brands I'd like to include in various suggestions, uh, videos that I will create in the build up to Christmas. And Bianchi and Nadi is a brand I'd like to incorporate. But I am mindful of the fact that a number of my viewers have said, please don't uh, solely focus on handbag uh, content. So I'll try and fit it in, in the build up to Christmas. I hope I'm able to do it. But I'm going to be introducing you to Bianchi and Nadi 1946 bags um, after the introduction. I'm Anesu Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things. Whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, you're into luxury, but you want to focus more on high quality under the radar brands, or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying better quality from the get-go, then my content is geared towards you. Bianchi and Nadi 1946 was started in 1946 by two co-workers, Mario Bianchi and Aldemaro Nadi. It's now currently being run by the third generation, their grandchildren. And there are two Bianchis and three Nadis running the business. Mario and Aldemaro first came together in 1935 when Aldemaro was 11 years old with a burning passion to become a leather craftsman. Managed to get an apprentice with a famed leather craftsman, Angelo Scuri, where he met Mario, uh, a fully fledged leather worker who went on to teach Aldemaro everything he would go on to know about leather craft. The following year, uh, Mario left the workshop. Aldemaro by then was a fully fledged uh, leather craftsman and he was working under uh, Angelo Scuri, um, producing bags. 1941, stepped out on his own and started his own business, at which point he created five, five samples, which he presented to Gucci or Gucci. Gucci liked them, 
and they went on to work together with uh, Aldemaro producing bags for him. And then in 1943, Mario and Aldemaro's paths crossed again when Mario left the army and they started producing bags together. But it was only in 1946 that Bianchi and Nagy in 1946 was officially founded after Aldemaro had purchased the first headquarters in the heart of Florence in a historic building at 25 Via Borgo Pinti. They carried on producing bags for brands such as Gucci, Dior came into the foray. Uh, they started producing the exotic skin bags for Chanel. And by the 60s, they were producing bags that were retailed in some of the best department stores in the world. Think, for example, Harrods in London, uh, Galeria Lafayette in Paris, Neiman Marcus in New York, Isatan in Tokyo. And then 2014, they started producing their own range of bags in addition to producing bags for other brands. And then in 2018, they opened their first uh, boutique in Italy, in Florence. Uh, they have a second boutique in Italy, in Milan, and they have a concession in the Four Seasons Hotel in Florence. The brand produced their bags in um, a workshop that is 20 minutes from Florence in an area called Scandici. And Scandici is the leather hub. When people talk about high Italian craftsmanship, uh, some of the best tanneries in Italy, they are typically based within Scandici, the greater Scandici area. So you have some of the, the good and the great, um, the most well-known aspirational brands with workshops in Scandici. Think, for example, Gucci, Prada, Saint Laurent, Dior, for example, and then lower leveled brands, uh, the bridge I'll be introducing to you, to you shortly. Um, and then another one I'll talk about next year, Gianfranco Lotti, for example. A lot of the very well-respected and known brands have their operations in Scandici, where Bianchi and Nadi also have their workshop. Bianchi and Nadi are primarily focused on producing bags using exotic leathers. Very similar to another Italian brand, Colombo. I'm going to attach the video above where I talk about Colombo. But the distinct difference between them is Colombo's focused on bags in uh, crocodile skin, whereas Bianchi and Nadi have a much wider selection. There's ostrich, python, lizard, and also crocodile. When I was talking to Bianchi and Nadia, I asked them, who are your competitors or who do you think um, your competitor is in this space? And they said Colombo. And what I think is worth noting is I don't think Colombo and Bianchi and Nadi are the same level of luxury. And that's not to take away from Bianchi and Nadi. Colombo is a higher level of luxury alongside, very confidently, alongside Joseph de Clos Moynard, for example, truly representing ultra high end level of luxury. Bianchi and Nadi is a lower level of luxury when I consider the craftsmanship and the quality of leathers. Colombo is higher quality of leathers. They're sourcing from HCP tanneries, um, Louisiana in particular, and the level of craft is higher. The details of their bags um, is higher. It's more superior when compared to Bianchi and Nadi. Bianchi and Nadi, um, when I consider the leathers, I consider the craft, I consider the price point, it's a slightly lower level, but it's very confidently upholding the level it's, it's at. I would say their bags are top end of your, your pre, uh, premium core, um, lower end of super premium. Super premium would be with brands like Delvo, for example. And then um, your premium core is more of your aspirational brands. Think Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Fendi, Givenchy, for example. I would very confidently put Bianchi and Nadi ahead of those brands alongside your high quality under the radars like Metier. Um, another one I would place is Loro Piana with the Cecia that I've spoken about. Loro Piana is not a, a handbag brand, but their bags are beautifully made. They are some of the very best within that premium core. And I'd confidently put Bianchi and Nadi there. Bianchi and Nadi bags are also a lot more approachable, fun, the colors, the designs, the styles, they're playful, they're fun, they're for a younger age, a more diverse age. Whereas Colombo to me is more mature, it's an incredibly poised brand, their bags are poised, they have gravitas, they're elegant. 
I just don't think there's fitting for a very young person. They're more an older person bag. Someone who's a little more mature in terms of how they carry themselves and also how they dress. Whereas Bianchi and Nadia, it's fun, it's approachable, it's playful. The colors, the designs, the prints, they're absolutely fantastic and at a lower price point as well. You have, for example, the exotic skins, their lizard bags tend to be more your smaller bags, uh, structured bags, because lizard is more structured. It's a stiffer leather. And also you don't have uh, huge quantities of lizard. So it's the smaller bags typically priced between 1,000 and 2,000 euros. Uh, their python bags are typically priced between 1,000 and 3,000 euros. And then their crocodile bags are from 3,500 euros and above. Most of their styles at Bianchi and Nadi um, are produced in calfskin, a smooth calfskin. And they range in price from the cheapest being about 750 euros, most expensive 1,950 euros. Whereas Colombo is coming in with a product that's three, four times the price. Their calfskin, um, calfskin options you have, for example, the Dion, um, price of 3,300. But I do have a major update. Uh, to to announce about Colombo and by the time this video comes out that uh, uh, the update video will have come out and I'll attach it above so Colombo you're starting 3,300 euros for their calf skin compared to Bianchi 750 through to 1,950 and then their crocodile bags we're talking starting price of about depending on the size the style between 10 to 12,000 euros going well up to about 25, 30,000 euros, depending of course on the, the, the leather that's been used and the size and the level of detail. But without a doubt, Colombo is a much higher level of craftsmanship, quality of leathers in comparison to Bianchi and Nadi. Bianchi and Nadi is bringing in phenomenally priced exotic skins within, within the premium core space, where they're typically a lot more expensive when you consider Louis Vuitton, for example, uh, Givenchy or Gucci when they bring in their their exotic skin. So they're bringing in a comparable, a, a very well priced product uh, within the premium core, um, as far as I'm concerned when it comes to Bianchi and Nadi. But it's a superb brand that's a lot more attainable than Colombo. It's uh, bringing in much needed competition. As I always say, if you're not into hype, the fuss, the fanfare of the aspirational uh, brands, then you're going to get some beautiful, versatile bags from Bianchi and Nadi. I spent almost two hours in the Florence boutique, just poring over the bags, talking about the leathers, the colors, the designs, the inspiration. It was such a fun visit, but a couple of things worth mentioning before uh, I talk about the bags. The first, there were, there were two floral arrangements in the store. And when I looked closely, I noticed uh, the entire arrangements were made from exotic leathers. And I'm sure it's something that they can sell, but I thought, oh my gosh, this is really pretty and incredibly well made. The second is the custom option. With all of their bags, there's the option to customize the bags. Customize in terms of uh, choosing the leather, which exotic leather you'd like, the colors, and then you can also choose the hardware that you would like with the bag. Depending, of course, on the intricacy of the design, the type of leather, the time of year will determine the turnaround period. But what I've noticed, regardless of the brand, is the closer you um, you order to Christmas, the longer it will take. As you can imagine, Christmas presents, and the, generally the, the period between summer when they open after the summer holidays into Christmas, it tends to be a, a bit slower. So I'd always say with any brand, try and order bags beginning part of the year in the lead up to the summer, but don't leave it too close to um, the, to August. That is when a lot of factories start uh, winding down, wo uh, workshops start closing down for the summer break. The bags, there are three best-selling uh, bags for the brand. The first is the Antonio. All three sizes are incredibly popular. The Antonio bag is a top handle bag that comes with an additional strap. So you can very comfortably hold the bag over the shoulder, crossbody, or as the top handle. And depending on the size, the leather, it's a bag you can wear to an occasion, a wedding, a date, or even to work. The second style is the Valeria. Valeria comes in two sizes, and it's more of a, a fairly functional work bag. You can put in your laptop, files, depending on the size, tablets, and so forth. 
Uh, comes with two handles, additional straps so you can carry the bag over the shoulder, cross body. Has a zip on top that closes the entire length of um, the bag. And then open the bag, one big compartment. On one side, you have a zipped pocket. And then on the other side, you have a, a pocket, but it's open with a little clasp. So it's very easy to get access in and out of the bag. And then the third style is the Scarcella. Scarcella, you're literally getting two bags for the price of one. And it very much depends on where you thread the strap. There are two um, hardware pieces on the back. Thread those through and you can carry the bag over the shoulder or as a crossbody bag and it sits flush on your um, on your hip bag has one big compartment with a pocket on one side but if you thread it um, between the two holes then you can carry the bag as a belt bag on the inside of the bag you also have two straps so you can totally change the shape and the capacity of the bag close the two straps and it it, it makes it a more rectangular shape and then open it out roomier and you get more of the trapezoid type shape. And then three other styles I thought worth noting, worth mentioning. Firstly, the tote. I liked the color, I liked the ostrich element, I liked the price point, something that, a uh, price point that you typically won't get with other brands. It's one big compartment with an open pocket on one side, two sizable lengthy straps so you can carry the bag over the shoulder, um, or in the crook of your arm if you choose. And it also comes with a, a pouch attached on a long piece of leather. So it's easy to fish it out, bring it out of the bag and use the pouch and then slip it back in. And then the clasp on top to close the bag, but it's largely an open tote um, um, on the top. And then also worth mentioning, and I really liked, thought it was cute. I like the color, I like the floral detail, I like the lizard skin. It's the Soleil bag. Open the bag, one compartment, pocket on the one side, and then you have the hardware at the back and you can attach the strap and the bag sits beautifully flush against your hip. And then the final bag I wanted to show you, and I really like this, this stood out to me, the kimono, made from uh, crocodile skin, different colors, different, um, you could even use different types of uh, crocodile, shiny and also the matte. A beautiful bag it's poised it stands out people notice it I like the floral detail top handle bag with an ornate clasp on top open the bag one big compartment and there's an open pocket on one side uh, made from the crocodile and then on the um, the outside of the bag one of the sides you have uh, two um, strategically um, placed pieces of crocodile and you have a little uh, discreet pocket uh, to the bag so that's um, a selection of some of Bianchi and Nadi's most popular and styles that stood out to me in terms of being practical, versatile. They would work in a number of different um, situations, events, for example. Do let me know if any caught your eye. Uh, next time I'm in the region, I'll definitely take a look. They also have a store in Milan, so I'll, I'll pop in there and update you on whatever else I see next time. To all my wonderful subscribers, as always, Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.